All right, we're live, I think. Welcome to the Sam Home Salient channel, live from um, Fort William, Scotland. Uh, we're near the Corpac locks right here. Tomorrow I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the locks and we'll start the journey through the Caledonian Canal. Of course, all documented on YouTube. We got people from all over. France, Chesapeake, Pensacola, Belfast. Hello, everybody. San Diego, Canada. <clears throat> so I've been in Scotland for a little bit now. I the first got ashore at the Isle of Isla, where they make all that delicious peaty scotch I love. And I got to do quite a bit of tasting <laughs> of the scotch there. And I spent a few days there, and then I've been working my way towards the Caledonian Canal up the this kind of lock that comes in here, and then to the first like series of locks with a C K to go up into the canal. I just uh, I talked to them on the radio, and they weren't able to. The tide is too low right now. Look how low the tide is, very low. They have like I think a 14 foot tide here, so. Um, the, t the, the lock only op operates when it's got to be like 1.3 meters high or something. So tomorrow we'll go through there and start that. I think it's like 60 miles. What else has been going on? Uh, I finally have good cell signal, so I've got three more, vi three more videos to upload from Ireland. You guys, the last thing you saw was from um, Kinsale. But I've made it all the way across the north side of Ireland and all around the north of Ireland over to Scotland. And the plan after the Caledonian Canal is, well, I was thinking about sailing over to Norway if the had a good weather window, but I'm not sure if uh, they're letting people, people in there from from the, that came from the UK right now. See if there's any questions. Someone asked if I will go to the south of the equator and I, I really want to go south of the equator at some point. So that, that, that should happen. I want to go through the Panama Canal and then down to the South Pacific after I cross back across the Atlantic next year. Somebody asked if I was drinking a cup of milk. Yes, I'm drinking a cup of milk. I got some milk the last place I went out. I need, need to finish it. it. It spilled all over the place in my fridge. Um, so if I can't go to Norway, I could also cross the North Sea and skip Norway and go to Sweden. I'm not sure. I think they'll let me in. Uh, otherwise, I'll keep going down the... Uh, the UK, I guess, and then go to Holland, and then maybe through the the canal that goes through Germany, Kiel Canal. I don't know. We'll see how this canal goes. If I'm up for another canal, canal seems like it might be a lot of motoring, but man, it was really beautiful sailing in in here. We got like Ben Nevis over here. I think maybe tomorrow I'll try to try to hike up uh, Ben Nevis, or maybe the next next day. And then there's some cool shipwrecks around here. Um, so I got I gotta check out the shipwrecks. I love I love I love shipwrecks. They're my favorite. See if there's any other questions. I don't really know what I'm doing here. <laughs> So I got here, they weren't gonna let me go through the canal because they said I needed to get two dose, 
vaccine and a COVID test. But then I persuaded them to let me in. So someone asked where I paraglided in Ireland, and that video I think is coming. I'm gonna upload that in a day today, maybe or the next day. And I paraglided off of a mountain in Dingle. I think that's gonna be some really good paragliding opportunities if the weather cooperates. In in Scotland too, there's some really cool looking mountains around here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do that. But I I flew in off this mountain in Dingle in Ireland, and it was kind of a quick flight but it's always good to, to fly the paraglider somewhere new. So, <laughs> let's see, we've seen many questions. Oh, here's another thing. A lot of people are talking about my tracking because I'm using, well, I had the, the Iridium tracker on Predict Wind, and people keep telling me it's it's broken. But I am not. I canceled the my uh, Iridium subscription because I um, canceled the Iridium subscription because I'm not sailing offshore right now. I'm like within cell signal, within a day of cell signal, wherever I go. So I didn't really need the $140 a month just to have like the. I don't know. I don't the the satellite tracking, so I don't. Um, I canceled the. I don't have that tracking, but I do have my Garmin tracking is on sometimes. So if you see, if you find the old link, it's somewhere on my website. It's uh, the eases. It doesn't. It's not quite as cool as the Predict Wind tracking website, but um, I'll keep using that a little bit. Let's see. I saw another good question. What was it? Someone asked if I have more diesel leaks. So my solution to my diesel leaks is I just only fill the tank like halfway. And that reminds me I need to get some more diesel um, as I come in here because I motored la last two days. What was the other question? Someone asked, reflecting on my journey, Jason, would I have planned anything differently? Hmm. Would I have planned anything differently? No, I think I've been, I've been, been hitting the right spots at the right time, pretty much. But maybe I should have fixed my, if a few things that have broken, like the diesel tank would have been nice to get that sorted out. Maybe I, maybe I wouldn't have brought a few things that I brought. Maybe I wouldn't have brought the bicycle. And maybe just like, I, I think electric scooter or electric skateboard, maybe that would be better. Uh, Let's see, what else other comments are there? How do I make the comments come back? I feel like I'm not quite on a roll at it with this, uh, this live stream. But the Dodger has been working great. I went on a couple of distillery tours in Isla. I love myself some scotch, or any whiskey really. Um, So someone asked if I put my quarantine flag up, but actually what I did when I came into the UK is I just called the yacht hotline and it was so easy. There's this guy on the phone. He just asked me a couple questions and he said, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a call back. And they uh, called me back within like an hour and they said, yep, you're, you're good to sh go ashore. So I got cleared in with immigration and customs just on the phone. Um, and that was the easiest. Yeah, I was really surprised how easy it is to get into the to UK. Um, that, that was coming from Ir Southern Ireland, though. It's, just, it's one of the easy countries to get in from. Someone asked about the 3D printed parts holding up. The ones that were get in the sun, the, 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 the screens and the, uh, the screens and the shutters, they got, they warped because they got too hot, I think. So those didn't hold up. But everything else, like the, the stuff that's like, uh, 
holding the solar panels up and the arch, just like little spacer blocks. That's not really structural or even in the sun. That's holding up just great. Um, someone asked if I have sketchy run-ins with pirates, and I've had a few a few run-ins with pirates, but um, I guess I always I always came out on top. So not a big deal. I plan to visit the Dutch Islands. What are the Dutch Islands are there? Let's see what else we got as far as questions. Someone asked if I got bored. I was listening to an audio book today, so that kept me busy while I was sailing in. Someone says get a bigger boat. This is more boat than I really need, so I'm happy with this one. Someone said if I was going to pick one, Ireland or Scotland. I don't know. Everybody in Ireland was super cool, but I, I really liked Scotland, like the, the mountains sailing through so far. It sounds like there's a bunch of cool people who want to meet up in Scotland, so I think it should be cool. Someone asked where in Scotland I am. I'm at the head of the, the west side of the Caledonian Canal, Fort William. Let's see what else we got in the comments. Do I have firearms on board? I don't have firearm on board because I don't really need one. Crinean. Oh, how do I? So someone asked if I was going to Inverness. I think I am, because after I get um, to the other side of the canal, I was going to meet up with someone there, who I sent some packages to. Someone asked, is age 47 too old to learn how to sail? I don't think so. It doesn't really take very long to know. I mean, you can learn how to sail in like a, you know, a couple of days or just a day. I take people out sailing and then they can sail. So then you can sail. So I don't think it's too old. We got what is one the one sailing book you would recommend? Uh, I don't remember the books of any of the, the sailing books I've read. Um, do you plan to sail to go back to the U.S.? Someone said, "Oh yeah, I plan to sail back to the U.S. I want to sail to Sweden this year and then store the boat in Sweden." Someone offered me a a slip there for dry storage maybe dry storage. And then I'm gonna go uh, take a little break for a couple months and then I'll come back and sail down to the Mediterranean and then I'll sail to the uh, to West Africa and then over back across the Atlantic. And then I'll do the Caribbean because I haven't sailed in the Caribbean yet. Someone asked if I could, they could see my anchoring and retrieval techniques. Sure, maybe I'll, I'll wear the GoPro next time when I pull the anchor up. It's not very interesting, it's just pulling it up. I usually pull it up by hand even though I have the, the windlass because, I don't know, it keeps me strong. I don't play the bagpipes, someone asked. No. Someone asked about my workshop and I am renting it out right now. So, don't go bother that guy, he's pretty cool. Um, the radio. Someone asked about Sven, and I think I, well, he invited me to meet him at his workshop, so hopefully we'll get to meet again, maybe when I'm in Sweden. Someone asked him in Edinburgh. No, we're a couple hours north, hour and a half north of Glasgow. Glasgow. Someone asked him I'm going to do the canal solo, and I just talked to him on the radio. They said that it shouldn't be a problem to do it solo. So, uh, for the most part, unless I have someone come help. And someone says about the Loch, Loch SB asked about the Loch Ness Monster. We're going to find the Loch Ness Monster, I'm pretty sure, because we're going to sail all the way through it, and I've got that light on the front of the boat. It's going to light everything up, so 
if he's out there, we're gonna get him, and we'll we'll live stream it live on YouTube when we catch the Loch Ness monster, and then we'll we'll have merchandise about about it and everything. It's gonna be big, man. We're gonna we're gonna catch that monster, and we'll show it to the world. How many sharks have I seen? Hmm. Maybe I've seen 30 sharks. Uh, someone asked if Atlantic or Pacific sailing to the Atlantic, across the Atlantic or to Hawaii was scarier. Well, I never sailed across an ocean when I sailed to Hawaii, so that was scarier. Although, I thought the Atlantic was going to be rougher than it was, so that was kind of scary too. But in the end, it wasn't too bad. Neither of them were that bad, once you look back at it. Someone asks, is it weird being on solid ground after a long boat passage? Sometimes you get a little bit, a little bit wobbly if you get on, on solid ground. Man, this tide is going so low. It's like land is like, a pro is like encroaching on my little anchorage spot here. How deep are we? All right, we still got 10 feet of water, so we're good. We gotta keep an eye on it. But actually this will make it really easy. I could probably just walk ashore pretty soon. A lot of these boats over here are just dried out in the seaweed and mud. <laughs> I don't have any bagpipes because they would be kind of a big instrument to play. I have my little piano and my little saxophone because they fit on the boat really nicely. And also I know how to play them. Maybe I should I should try to catch a fish in, uh, in Scotland. I was so, I caught, I got, that fish lasted me so long I had in Ireland I hadn't really tried. So I want to mention the tides around the UK and they are very, they have really drastic tides, like 15 feet, 14 feet right here, I think. So they are pretty big tides. They were also pretty big in Maine and like Massachusetts kind of. Um, but I think they're even bigger here. But it's weird because sometimes I'll just go around the other side of an island and then the tide will only be like, you know, two feet. And then the other side, it's like 14 feet. So I don't really understand the tide deal. It's a little, someone asked about the temperature here, and it's uh, a little bit cool. It's like in the 50s, I think. So it's not too bad, actually. Really windy right now, though. You can see the flags going. Someone, oh, someone asked if a 22 footer is too small to take across an ocean. It's a little small, but the, the little trans pack, trans sat boats are, uh, are that size, so apparently not too small. So I'm gonna see, we got a bunch of mosquitoes here. I got lots of uh, my DEET, so hopefully that'll be good. Um, again, just for anyone who missed it, the, the, the tracker, I'm no longer using the, the predict wind tracker, that's for offshore passages. Um, I'll use my Garmin link. I'll try to update my website so it, it has the, uh, the Garmin link on it. Have you, you share your match experience? Uh, so someone asked, oh, who is it? Dan asked about my scotch experiences. I don't have like a, a very discerning palate. I just like to drink scotch. So it's basically my experience with scotch is just enjoying it all. <laughs> so someone asked if I wish to have radar. No, nah, I don't need a, no, nah, I don't need radar. I was sailing all, all yesterday through the fog without radar. I didn't need it. Let's see. Only Ireland is worth visiting. 
I didn't do uh, Northern Ireland, only Southern Ireland. I wasn't really intentional. Just didn't really make sense to stop there based on the wind. I try to sail, I keep sailing if there's good wind. Cause there's so many places to stop. I'm never gonna, never gonna stop everywhere. So I just kind of stop where it's convenient. I end up seeing some really cool places like Mainland Head. There's these nice, these cool little cottages with straw roofs up there. And this guy invited me in to show me his cottage. <laughs> and the cottages, were, I was really excited about them. So I might go down the east coast of the UK. It depends on what the weather is looking like in the North Sea. As we get further into October, I think it might be hard to cross that. And um, I, from what I've read, it, it can be pretty steep, uncomfortable uh, waves there, I guess, because it's not so deep and has a lot. Um, so I might, it might not, I might not want to cross it unless I have pretty good weather. And if it, then in that case, maybe I would just kind of go down the coast of the UK. Um, but if it got good weather, why not? I could probably do it. This boat is uh, doing pretty good. So we will probably wrap it up kind of soon. I don't have a whole lot to talk about. Someone asked if, it's just, if when I've decided if when I'm gonna hang it up for winter. And I have not decided. We'll just have to play it by ear. One thing I was thinking about, maybe, uh, maybe anybody's got any ideas or leads. I was thinking about maybe towards the end of October or in November, um, storing the boat up here somewhere and then flying down to the med and maybe picking up like a, like a Hobie cat or a dinghy or something, or one of those like sailing kayaks and doing like a, like a kind of a boat camping adventure somewhere down there, if it would be warm enough. Uh, and then maybe, maybe I could do some videos on that too, just to uh, switch it up over the winter. But I need to find a boat down there and do some more research. But that's a thought, you know, because I don't really want to sail too, too, too much in the winter up here. All right, I think, let's see if we have any other things, comments. All right, thanks for tuning in to the live stream. We're going to wrap it up here. See you guys next time. Should be another video coming out very soon.